So recently I've been taking a few interviews for primarily React positions and I normally tend to ask questions on how to optimize your React app which eventually leads me to React or Tanstack query. And for some reason a lot of candidates think that Tanstack query has a persistent cache. When I ask them where is this cache data stored, more often than not I get local storage, session storage, index db or one of these persistent browser stores as the answer which is obviously not right. So I just wanted to quickly summarize how and more importantly where this cache data gets stored. So yeah, let's just jump into it. Now Tanslack query is designed to manage and optimize data fetching by reducing unnecessary requests and caching data that's already been fetched. It stores all cache data in JavaScript's runtime memory, which is essentially stored in the browser's RAM for the duration of a session. Since it's only in memory, it won't persist if the page is reloaded or if the browser is closed. Unlike local storage or index DB, which retain data beyond a session, the Tanstack query cache clears when the page or application unloads. All this data is stored in the form of plain JavaScript objects. The library organizes these objects in a way that allows easy access, updates, and invalidation of cache entries. There are these two properties called GC time and stale time that determine the freshness of the data as well as the time till which it's stored in the cache. Stale time obviously determines how long a cached result is considered fresh before it becomes stale. While the data is fresh, it will not refetch on re-render or on access. When the data becomes stale after this stale time, answer query may refetch if the component requires it. GC time, which is basically the garbage collection time, which was earlier known as cache time, specifies how long Tanstack query should retain a stale result in memory after it is no longer used by any component. If GC time is set to 5 minutes, which is also the default value, Tanstack query will keep that result in memory for 5 minutes after it goes unused, allowing faster access if a component requires it again within that time frame. After GC time expires, the data is then garbage collected. I have the simple React app here that makes a GET request to a JSON placeholder endpoint that fetches a list of to-do items. This React app is pretty straightforward and I am using the use query hook to fetch the results. I am assuming you already know what this hook does and how to use it, but if not, you can watch the video around this hook in this playlist. I've also enabled the dev tools for Tanstack query. So if I go inside my main.tsx file, you'll find the React query dev tools. If I go inside the browser, you'll find the Tanstack query dev tools over here. If I open it up, you'll also find the to-dos entry, which is basically the API that fetches this list of items. Now inside the component, if you notice, I have set the GC time property to 10 seconds. This means after 10 seconds, the garbage collector is going to get rid of this to-do's cache data. Also, this only happens when the component is not accessing the to-do's query data. So inside the browser, the root route, which is basically this app component, is accessing this cache data from the to-do's query. So as long as I'm on this route, the garbage collection would not happen even when I have the GC time set to 10 seconds. That's because the query is not inactive. It only becomes inactive when no component is using it. So to demonstrate this, I also have a dummy component which is not using this cache data. So inside my application, I have this dummy.tsx file and you see that I am not using the to-dos data anywhere inside this component. All I am doing here is console logging the entire cache and also running a set timer that will do the same thing but after 11 seconds. I have the first console log here right when the component mounts. I have the set timeout here. I'm assuming you can also visualize the cache data inside the memory tab of your dev tools. So if I open up room dev tools, I do have a memory section here and I'm assuming if you take a snapshot of this heap memory, you'll be able to find the cache data. But since we already have a method provided by Tanstack query, we'll use that. That's much more convenient. So inside the browser on the root route, you have the cache data here. When I go to the dummy route, you'll initially see that we get the entire entry inside the console, the entire cached entry. Let me close this for a while. And if I go to the dummy route, we have the entire cached entry here, which basically is the list of to do items. 
And now after 10 seconds, if you wait for 10 seconds, you should see an empty array here. This means the cache data has been garbage collected and the next time you go to the root route, a fresh copy will be created. So I'll demonstrate this once again. I'll go back to the root route. Now if I go to the dummy route and come back before the GC time expires, you'll see the API call in the network tab. So if I go to the dummy route and even before the 11 second timer expires, I'll go back and you do see the API request here in the network tab. That's because by default, the stale time in TanStack query is set to zero. So what happens is TanStack query still shows you the cached results right away. Since we came back to this route before the GC time could expire, we still have the results in memory, which is why there was no delay in rendering the list. But since the stale time is also zero by default, TanStack query assumes that the data is not fresh. So it makes a refresh in the background and replaces the cache with a new copy. So initially, it does use the old cache data, but also makes a fresh request behind the scenes and replaces the old cache with this new fresh copy. So we can actually see this in action. I'll set the network speed to slow 3G and I'll go to the dummy route. Before the time expires, I'll come back to the root route and you'll see that there was no delay and the API request was still going on. It took a while, it actually took two seconds this time to resolve this API, which means that initially TanStack query displayed the cache data, which is why you were not able to see the loading indicator here, but at the same time, it actually made a request behind the scenes. It took two seconds to resolve that request and then it eventually updated the cache which updated this list. All of this was not visible to your eye because the list is pretty much the same. You can see that it took time to resolve, but at the same time, we did not see the loading indicator here. So Einstein query actually gave you the cached copy first, and then it replaced the cached copy with the data that came back from this API response. Now what I'll do is I'll go back to the dummy route and I'll wait for 10 seconds. So once the 10 second window expires, data will be garbage collected. And the next time I go back to the root route, it will make an API request, but this time there is no cache data. Since the GC time expired, the garbage collection also happened and the cache data was removed from the memory. So this time you will actually see a loading indicator here because it cannot render the list based on the cache data that is in the memory. The cache data is already garbage collected. So there's nothing in the memory. So now I'll go back to the root route and you see that we get this loading indicator. And now, it actually made a request to the to-do send point and then it stored the result inside the cache. Just how JavaScript handles garbage collection for any other variables in your app, it treats this cached copy in the same manner. It's literally just an object in heap memory. You need to configure the GC time and the stale time based on your application needs to optimize your app and bring in the best experience for the user. So yeah, that was a quick overview on how TanStack query handles its cache data. Since the cache is session bound, users will lose the data if they refresh or close the page. So do consider caching critical data in persistent storage like local storage if needed. There's a way to do it in TanStack query with the help of persist query client. If an application has a use case wherein you have to persist some data from the cache, you should definitely check it out. Also, I'm sure you must be wondering what happens if there's too much data in the cache. That's definitely going to affect your application negatively. If memory is full with cache data, it will hamper the performance, especially in low RAM devices. Garbage collection would also slow down because of huge complicated data and it also causes issues in rendering and even state management. Browsers these days do have mechanisms in place to manage memory and have session limits, but it's also your duty as a developer to avoid having way too much data in the cache to begin with. So yeah, I hope this video helped in some way or another. Do subscribe to the channel for similar content and I'll see you in the next one.